What I'm going to show you now is how to take qualitative benthic macroinvertebrate samples. When we're talking about benthic macroinvertebrates, we're talking about small insects and invertebrates that are living on the bed of the stream or river. And macroinvertebrates are those that are larger than half a millimetre in size. So the particular device that we commonly use to take qualitative samples is this device here, which is commonly known as a kick net. Sometimes it's referred to as a D net or a hand net. And it has uh, an open frame, a mesh net, and this particular version has a pothole at the back to collect the samples in. The advantage of using the kick net is that it enables us to sample a wide range of habitats in the stream and to collect a more complete species list of all the animals that might live in the area. So when we talk about a qualitative sample, we're not able to get density data out of the sample we take from a kick net. We wouldn't use it for biomass studies, but we would use it if we wanted to do a biodiversity study, if we wanted to work out the health of a stream or a waterway. So we've decided that we're going to take some qualitative samples at this particular site here which is a riffle of fast water and then a run of some slower water beneath it. These qualitative samples don't actually need to be replicated, so we don't need to take multiple samples. The technique we use with this device is that we sample a range of habitats and pull them and put them in one sample. We'll see what I mean by that in a minute. So one of the first things we're going to do is have a look at our reach and decide where we're going to sample in the reach. We usually work from the bottom up so that we're not disturbing the area that we've just been over. And with this sort of sample, we want to actually sample a range of habitats within the stream. So we might want to take a sample in the slower water, uh, the shallower water, a sample in faster, deeper water here, and then we might want to move up towards the very fast white, whiter water with larger boulders and cobbles, so that when we collect a sample, we're going to have a composite of each of these different microhabitats collected together in our one qualitative kick net sample. The kick net is placed pretty firmly down on the bottom of the stream bed. You can see you can hold on to it by the handle here, and then all you're going to do is thoroughly disturb the substrate immediately in front of the net. And you can see here in this case I'm using my boots, I'm kicking pretty rig vigorously here, and I'm just kicking in an area almost directly in front of the net. Turning over the boulders, rubbing my boot over the top of the boulders here just to get all the small insects and invertebrates that are on uh, the bottom of the boulder, and that's my sample in this particular area. What I'll do in this particular reach is I'll take five samples like that. So I'll move a little bit further upstream here and take a sample here in the slower water. And again, kick fairly vigorously in front of the net. I might, because there's not much flow here, I might just have to move the net through the water and disturb it pretty thoroughly. We've taken four, up to four areas we've sampled here. And for this particular protocol, we might sample five habitats in this particular reach as a composite sample. So my next sample is going to be up in the faster water here, uh, probably under one of these, these boulders. And again, I'll disturb in behind that. In this case, I might use my hands to get in and disturb the substrate, turn the boulders over. And collect my five final sample here. Some of the invertebrates will be stuck to the side of this net, so I often might need to flush it out several times to get them to come down into the bottom of the pothole here, which I'm then going to transfer to a pothole to take back to the laboratory. To do that, what I'm going to do is unwind the, the pothole here, which has got my sample in it, and transfer it to a pothole which I'm going to take back to the laboratory. Now this pothole here I've labelled. I've labelled the lid with the name of the site and the date. Often I might put who the collector was and may even have a site code. 
And something that's always worth doing is double labelling. And so I've uh, pre-prepared a label here that I've printed out, paper, waterproof paper. Uh, you could write on it in a pencil and keep that inside the bottle and then we've got a second label on the outside. We've now got our, our sample that we can transfer to the bottle. Need to add a little bit of water to it here. And then make sure that our bottle's completely empty. We haven't got any sample left in here. And then if I'm going to process the sample in a couple of days or later on, then I would add ethanol. Usually, if you are going to take this back to the laboratory and process it within an hour or two, you may not preserve the sample, you may not add ethanol, but more often than not, we would. We'd add about 100% ethanol to try and preserve the animals and keep them in good condition for us to look at in the microscope. So we can close this up, add some ethanol if we want to, and then take this back to the laboratory. The kick net, as a sampling device, does have some pros and cons. As you can see, compared to the server sampler that we've used previously, which enables us to take quantitative data, the kick net enables us to take qualitative data. We can sample a whole range of different habitats relatively easy. Because we've got a long handle here, the kick net can be used one-handed and it can be used in relatively fast water, water that it might be too fast for us to use the server sampler in. We can also use it in fairly deep water, because, again because of this handle. Another advantage of it is that we can get into little areas that it might be quite difficult to use a server sampler in. So we can get in behind rocks into small areas we can get down into relatively shallow water and disturb, disturb the substrate and collect the sample uh, in this device. One of the other advantages of the kick net is that we can also sample larger substrate like wood and leaf packs and that sort of thing. So if we can roll this log over and we can actually collect animals off the underside of these sort of microhabitats. So there's actually some little caddisflies and there's some eggs here on the underside of this log. And they're living off and feeding off bacteria and fungi and algae that's growing on this wood. So by using this sort of device, we can measure some of these unusual sort of habitats, possibly collect species that we wouldn't normally collect in fast water like a riffle or a run. Again, we are limited by how deep we can sample, so you're limited by how long the pole is, and also the big issue about the kick net is that we're not really able to take density data, so you're not really able to take, collect quantitative information with a kick net. We tend to use this for biodiversity work or stream health assessments. Once we've finished collecting our sample at a site, it's very important to make sure that you clean your net thoroughly. To make sure that there's no animals in it. So, for example, this, this net here has actually got a number of small insects still on it. We don't want to transfer this to the next site that we go and sample, otherwise we're going to end up with some data which has got contaminants from one site to another. Also, with the increase in didymo that's occurring around Canterbury, we probably want to clean our nets thoroughly and bleach before we move from one site to another.